Well, hello. My name is Chauncey Gosling. I am a student at SAPI Colors, and today I am going to be going over my capstone. So before we get started, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is, uh, once again, my name is Chauncey Gosling. I am a certified pharmacy technician with more than 13 years of experience. In 2019, I was nationally certified as a pharmacy, uh, as a CPT in Pharmacy Technician Certification Board, but also I am a visual artist. I've created many career of commercial projects, personal and commission pieces in which I'm very proud of. So I am also in a current, a full stack trainee at Savvy Coders, and I'm also working towards becoming a full stack developer and coding and engineer. Uh, I am much of a nerd. I love anime, I love video games, um, and you know, just technology and how those type of things kind of cause this. So that kind of brought me to wanting to foster my passions as a creative designer. Uh, my passions for creative design and engineering technology with this opportunity at Savvy Coders. These courses are providing me with new skills, qualifications, experiences to be to design applications, websites. So I also look forward to the future growth and opportunities within this career path. So uh, currently at this moment, I'm going to be presenting a capstone website in which that will be a platform the local artists can connect with other local artists and supporters. These websites will host art, artist profiles, galleries, and events for our goers to stay updated. So real quick, I'm going to go ahead and show you my screen. Okay. So next, let's talk about my time at Savvy Coders. Uh, Savvy Coders pretty much provided me a lot of different uh, ups and downs, I would say. But for foremost, it also taught me uh, new skills, uh, learning programs such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and those such. Um, they also allowed me to undergo different training regiments under Agile, where they also taught us things such as Scrums, um, which is a, a team a team development like wireframe. So what that pretty much means is that it's, it's a group of us and we work closely as individuals. Um, pretty much as we discussed different levels of the project and the status of that project itself. Um, me, there are different positions and roles within a scrum team. So you have your scrum master, you have your product, uh, you have your actual your product developer, um, and you also have developers on there as well. Me personally, I took on the role of scrum master, uh, where I was able to work uh, closely and delegate the meetings that we would meet up every day before our classes start um, and where we discuss how our projects are. Um, as a Scrum Master, I would have to kind of like narrate and guide through the, uh, the meetings itself, pretty much looking at things such as uh, blockers, um, our current status, what we worked on on the previous day, and what we're, what we're currently planning on reaching today's objective is. Um, so also Savvy Otis also gave us uh, other uh, website development. So within these development uh, tools that they provide us, we also had things such as Jira. Jira is pretty much our map of everything. We would, uh, <clears throat> we pretty much would have a, uh, a setup where we would go through the different courses of the project's level, kind of like how it goes up and how it goes down, what needs to be worked on, what can be improved upon. And then at the end of these, at the end of these uh, sprint plannings, that's what they're called, actually, these processes that it's going through. At the end of these sprint planes, uh, we would have what's known as a retrospective. These retrospectives uh, pretty much is a overlook on everything that happened throughout the week and the plannings of the week. And so, so myself as a scrum master, how the retrospective affected me was mainly seeing where we went wrong, how do we improve, and going into the next uh, sprint or the next uh, planning stage. And if there's anything that we did not be able to tackle, how can we implement that and force that into the new project itself? So not only did uh, we have these, these team development and a lot of these front end programs, we also worked on back end. Back end is more of the tech savvy stuff that pretty much allows us to, uh, pretty much allows us the project itself or the item to be sent to a server and boost it up to to actually run accordingly to how we want there, all these options and other things to be affected on an actual website. So Savvy also taught us different programs such as uh, MongoDB, Netlify, and Insomnia. Uh, these programs aren't 
um, my favorite forte, but it was something that was very interesting in the process of learning. Um, so throughout this whole process at, at Savvy's, what we were able to do was uh, we, our end goal was to make what's known as our capstone. Our capstone is the is a website in which we could build and in that website it's kind of a it's kind of just to show things that we learned so for me um the, one of the biggest things that i learned <laughs> was a lot of self-growth it was it, the program itself was a huge challenge but it was a challenge in a positive and a negative topic um, mainly it, it was something where I didn't come from. It was not my background as an artist. I like to do things with my hands. I'm more visually creative, but I also have to realize that I'm learning another language. Um, some people get it right then and there, and some people really take their time to actually learn. And so the biggest thing for me was the emotional side. Yeah, I typically looked at it as this might be something that I cannot do. But what I do like to appreciate about the program at Savvy's Colors is that with this, it comes a team and a great development staff. Um, they continue to push me through and make sure that I, could, I, I was able to talk to someone and ask questions of folks. And I, I really did appreciate that fact of my time over at Savvy's. So even with Scrum, I had teammates who would, you know, step in and help me out and help me with these uh, tough times that I was really, really going through because there was, like I said, there was an emotional side for me, which was very tough. And that's probably the biggest, big, one of the biggest issues that I've actually encountered when and during my time at Savvy's and during this whole project together. So after I finally got a kick of my, kick of my rum, <laughs> and got, got my confidence back, I started going back and starting to build my capstone. So let's go ahead and go over the, the actual process, the user frame of it, and the actual, how the, how the actual software would actually run. So if you see here on this, this is what I like to call my capstone beta. Capstone beta is pretty much um, how it's, it's not 100% there. This is going to be the idea of what I want the actual project to go through. So we have here, we have our main screen in which you would come in or log in would actually have your, your session logo at the very top of Social Hub for Artists. That eventually changes later down the road. Um, we have a sliding gallery where we have a, a couple pictures of different artists to bring their work in this page will automatically scroll through. So from there, you have a login and uh, a sign up IP. Uh, the only issue was is that we actually weren't able to tackle those uh, don't, those those functions in class. Uh, so for future references, hopefully we'll be able to have a login and sign up page at the very beginning. So when you do uh, have an account, you can go ahead and log in that way or sign up. Uh, so from there, you have you'll come down and you have your main page where you have um, a news feed that would feature your diff different artists. Uh, you have an explore tab, a call for arts, and also a discover. Um, from there. Uh, from that page, you also have, you'll go from uh, selecting on a different profile from an artist that you would like, if you like uh, their style of art, you go from there and then you open up their page. On their page, they'll have a picture of themselves, a small description, and then you have their gallery. Uh, we are, I'm excited to say that in the future, we will have a lot more features such as likes, comments, um, Anything, if you want to sell your artwork on the page, uh, you would have that as well. Um, and so the net functionality uh, will have an about, uh, an about page that would then go up to, uh, that you can then log on because you have a talk, task bar at the very top. And that, that task bar um, gives you different options of where you do to navigate through the website itself. All right. So let's actually see what. Uh, Sessions capstone looks like. So I am going to pull it up. There it was on the camera. I'm going to do a side by side here so you can see the code and you can actually see the functionality of the page. Let's go. Actually, this is this is so the page.
All right. So welcome to sessions. So as I stated before, um, we have our logo. Uh, at the very beginning, we have our navigation bar where we have home, artists, about, and our contact us. Now, like I said, we're going to implement a lot more new things into this as we keep pushing forward. Um, but I, I think the session looks good so far. Um, so welcome to sessions, a place for artists to build for artists. Notice how we switched that tag up. It's not a social hub just yet. We don't have a lot of uh, people coming to us yet. So let's go to our about page. And so here we says, what is sessions? Pretty much we have our mission here, our mission statement, uh, pretty much just outlining what the session is going to be about. Um, we want it to be a place for artists to come to um, and have their own moment, event, and space. It's pretty much going to be the platform for any artist's creative journey. Um, it's where you can show your creativity, host your own profile, uh, look, at, uh, look for art shows in your area, um, it's pretty much just a spotlight for our community. Uh, we take in our archives of various different styles of artists. We have um, visual artists. We want to have photographers. We want to have uh, performing media. If you want to do fashion, you want to have your fashion hub here. We do all that right here on your own local page. Um, so we'll go ahead and go back to our home page here. Um, and so this is our big old fun sign. I took the pleasure of taking this picture myself. <laughs> so, um, and as you scroll down, initially what we wanted here was there was, one, there was originally a slide. So where you were able to see the call for arts, I and mean, then we would have uh, a, a place where you can find local shows. Um, during the time frame of the capstone process, um, I had a lot of couple of misfortunate errors that we had to rebuild and recoup. And so unfortunately, uh, right now, like I said, this is all beta and future certain and future timeframes, we will have more for, for the folks. So, so you see here, we have a call for art um, at the very bottom. And this link here will actually direct you to Art St. Louis. Art St. Louis is pretty much um, our biggest competitor, as you can say, um, it's pretty much where you can find news about different art shows where you, if you want to submit your artwork, you you can come straight here. So uh, we are trying to beat the, uh, we are trying to beat the best, but we also can learn from the best as well. So um, right now we're just going to be using this link just so you can get directed straight there. Let's go ahead and meet some of our local artists that we currently have on our team now. So let's go over to our artist tab. Click here. And we have, so we kind of wanted to keep it at a point where you can find out who the artist was just based off the look of their, their work. Um, like I said, we can, we'll eventually implement some more where you can see who the artists are right in there um, before you click their page. Uh, but like I said, we did have a couple books on, and this is all beta, so we just kind of want to get the feedback as far as where we are going forward in the current state that we're in with this beta. So the first page is going to be the Peacock. This actually belongs to Don. Uh, Don is a visual artist who combines urban roughness with abstract portraits. Um, as you can see here, we have a couple of his pieces at the very bottom. And and slight little, slight little gallery style is kind of fun layout that we had here for this, these pieces. And, uh, and like I said, in future, future installments, we will implement comments and likes. Um, so then that will, will be able to tally that up there. Let's go ahead and meet another one of our artists here. We have Katia F. Uh, Katia F, she is known, uh, she's part of the new area of art creators. Uh, she owns her skills in digital arts and will be web shots, clip shots, and photo and uh, procreate. Um, and so here are some of her works as well. Like I said, once again, a fun little page, a couple pieces that she has. And then finally, let's look at our final one. Like I said, we did want to mix it up with different artists on our end. So we have a photographer here. So a photographer of my good friend, uh, his name is M. Shaw. Uh, M. Shaw is a portrait photographer from Tingles, and he catches many events from weddings, outing events, and many art shows. Uh, he happened to provide us with some of his New Year's Day pieces that he took up for some of us and my friends. Um, so it's just really great to show up. All right, so now that we're seeing some of the artists, let's go ahead and check out our contact us list. 
Um, so what we have here is our form page, pretty much our contact. So if you wanted to become an artist, um, you could just go ahead and fill out all this information, your name, yada, yada, yada. Um, you tick and select the category of art that you do. Um, and then you can also describe what you look here. Love it. Say that. Love it. Uh, and so from there, you can also upload your pictures. So if you want to select a, a painting or anything like that, you hit that. And then you would also hit the submit button. Now, fun thing about this was we originally was going to have it submit up to um, our backend side. Now, let me explain backend isn't for everyone that's a different language. Um, but unfortunately, what ended up happening was when I, uh, not when I, but when we actually implemented it up to Netlify, there were some loose strings in there. So what ended up happening was completely crashed everything. Um, so we we are still debugging everything and trying to figure that out. Um, but in the meantime, we also have another form in which you can also select where you would also put your name down here. If you just wanted to speak with us directly, um, you would go ahead and type in your name and email address and just say, love it. And what it was to do, it was submit this over. Supposed to submit it over to me and say, thank you for submitting it. But, uh, this happened to me last night, so we're not going to worry about that. So let's go ahead and look at some code. So from there, so how we initially learned how to build everything was uh, we were taught a SPA format. SPA format is known as a single page application, which what allows us to kind of condense a lot of the work into one root. And this is what I mean by root. Our root is going to be everything uh, it's going to be all of our different components and files in which we utilize. So how that really works is that we, it's kind of like a tree. So why I say it's a tree, it's because what you have is you have, it's all one single thing, but each branch does different things um, to get to the core group. So how I would explain it to you is more so we go from having a HTML, a base HTML, and a base Java, uh, JavaScript file. Those, these two JavaScript files, I guess I'll have something to say. These two files are pretty much going to be your core roots. Everything. everything functions basically out of that. You don't have to really too much change too much in that because everything's set up the way that we need to be set up. Um, so from there, we want to start getting some branches. So on our branches, we have several different things. We have a store folder, and then we have a components folder. Now, like I said, we want to look at this as two branches. So our store folder is a branch for our data. Everything that we want to interact with the core group is going to be found in here, in these files here. And so then on another branch, you have your components. So our components folder is going to house our leaves, our pretty little leaves. So our pretty little leaves are going to be in a, is going to be known as our views. Our views is going to be whatever one sees. You see tree when you look at a tree, you see the leaves, right? So if you see this, if you see these leaves, that's the stuff that you're going to be actually looking at. Um, so in these in these different folders, is going to house, like we said, we have our HT, uh, we have our headers, we have our paragraphs. Uh, we, we're implementing uh, pictures with these, and that's where you see. But it also, the benefits of doing it this way um, kind of compacts everything to one, uh, one single element. So you're not running around looking for different sources on, uh, from different, I guess, website documents or coding. Um, so I'll go ahead and explain. Let's just say we'll explain our first branch, which is going to be our Dawn. Don artist. Now, so when we had our Don page, let's go to that and we'll do a side by side. Can you see everything? Okay. Yeah. Um, so on our side by side page here, we, we're going to look at it like this. So we have our, which is our H1, as we see here, is going to be our Don's page. Um, and then we also have our, our gallery, way in which we saw all our pretty pictures. And then we have our paragraph. Now, this is where things kind of get um, interesting for me. Opposed to just kind of using the standard way of just um, when we implement pictures, we use a image source 
and that equals to a lot of times how it's, how it's utilized is that we're using a a link to an outside uh, or a website or something from online. Here we're doing a known as a import and output. Now remember how we said that we had a tree and everything on this tree is all connected initially. So for our pictures, we're going to want to use, we're using import here. And what this import is, what this import is doing is that it's pretty much pulling vines from a different branch. So now our tree is looking even prettier because now we have vines from the tree. And one second, we have vines coming through. So these vines are interconnecting everything. So we have an image folder that's housing all of our, our pretty pictures that we have. And all we're doing is we're taking those pretty pictures from another folder and opposed to having this long, massive uh, link, uh, link tag, we just have a small source, an image source. And what we're doing here is we have a object. So we're just giving all these pictures a purpose by doing it this way. Because now they're now opposed to them being links, they're actually objects um, that are going to be part of our tree. So going going into this, like I stated before, we, there's a lot of new features that I want to implement. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm uh, that a lot of a lot of new things that I want to have that want the actual website to function. Um, so far, at its at its core, uh, sessions is still a beta. It is a it is a it's a baby. It's it's still fresh and new. But this is this is the opportunity of where I said, you know what, I want to have something to present. Um, I stated earlier that you know savvy scores in this whole entire process is um, was very very. Uh, I wouldn't say very, very, but it was a challenge. It was, it was something that it was completely brand new to me. I had a lot of hiccups, um, and this whole process has taught me that um, I can't be resilient if I need to be. And there is patience, and it's not going to come right then and there. But as soon as I, if I keep pushing forward, if I keep working at it, and I will eventually gain an understanding of the position and what I want to be in, you know? So like I said, I thank you fully. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.